pastoral counseling with Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. is offering pastoral counseling for those who need spiritual, marital, family, and educational growth and support. To sign up or for more information, visit readtemple.org forward slash events or email E. Johnson Cooper at readtemple.org. Courage takes courage. Strength takes strength. Power takes power. Wisdom takes all three. And what's greater vessel than she? She with whom God abides, walks alongside, lovingly provides for, manifests in. God is who she finds rest in, and God in her. How much trust must the Savior have in who has been entrusted to both feed and populate the land? And that does not indicate her worth, just that if Creator wanted fruit, Creator knew who would birth, and then commune with. Nations, movements, what is a community, the world, without a woman? World would be sick, be hungry, be unlearned, be unloved, be misled. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, they said. But I'll do you one better. Heavy are the feet that tread this ground. Heavy are the hands that feed these crowds. Heavy are the tears that stream these faces. Heavy are the prayers that extend God's graces and the entire world is better for it. The elephant in the room, the voice in the wilderness, the perfect balance of power and tenderness. When everything seems flooded, women be the levee and we always make waves because women Walk heavy. Hello, and welcome to the Reed Temple online worship service. We're glad to be at Reed Temple and so glad you decided to join us. Thank you for worshiping with us. It's a joy to be in the land of the living. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of Women's Season. Beauty for Ashes, he'll give you, hallelujah, beauty for ashes, and we bless God. Can we agree that there's nobody like God? None compares to him. God, we worship and adore you, Jesus. Oh, 
excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower makes me say.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Sister Miranda said, in my life, be glorified. Can I get any witnesses that whatever God is doing in your life, you want to give him the glory? You don't want no self-glorification because you know nothing that you're doing, not even who you are, belongs to you. But all the glory belongs to God. Hallelujah! Who would serve a God like this? Healer, provider, protector. Be glorified in my life. I thank and praise God because she's coming back. Hallelujah. That's just the beginning. And we thank and praise God for the anointing that not just on her life, but it's evident that he resides in her life. And we thank and praise God that we know in her life, God is being glorified. Hallelujah. Welcome to Women's Season 2021. I thank and praise God for everything God has done. We have had a miraculous time in the Lord. We had a hat or two. Hallelujah. That just simply means women with a good God-given attitude. Hallelujah. And then on last Wednesday, we had three powerful tag team preachers. And then from there, we went on to Friday night where we talked to our own Reverend Mia Shagar Whitlock. And then we went on over to uh, uh, Kingdom Fellowship and we got our sister, Shauna L. Watley. And then we went on over to the Jenkins of uh, First Baptist of Glen Arden and Sister Trino Jenkins, hallelujah came on in and we talked to them and they told us all about what it means and all that it takes to be a first lady. But we thank and praise God even for Saturday. Saturday where we uh, really learn what it means to have beauty for ashes. We thank God for Dr. Frederica Brooks Davis and we thank God for Jazz Skirlock, Dr. Jazz. Y'all know can nobody do it like Dr. Jazz. And we thank and praise God for her. And then we went back and got one of our own from long time ago, Sister Shaka. And we are so glad that we are here on this early Sunday morning. We come to give God the glory, the honor, praise that's due unto his name because he's worthy women of God come on all over the church all turn your, your living room into your sanctuary and let's get ready to give God true praise and true worship we thank you Lord for what you're about to do in this place on this women's day of 2021 let us say together I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the day in thy courts, glory to your name, God, is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. Hallelujah. Because the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise, hallelujah, unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to say thank you. You've been so good, and you've been so kind, and you've been so merciful. God, you have kept us in spite of us. Lord, and for this, we just want to say thank you. Now, God, we thank you for the preparation of this day. But Lord, we're turning this service over to you. Have your way. Whatever it is you want to do, do it for your glory. Lord, we thank you that your anointing and your presence is already in this place. Now, God, we ask you to fill us till we want no more. We thank you for the preached word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone that shall give their life to Christ because of your word today. We thank you for our guest psalmist. God, we thank you for how you're using her and how you're blessing her. God, continue to let your Shekinah glory rule and reign in her life. Now, God, we ask you just to come on, come on, Jesus. Sit with us and sup with us, God, that we will feast on your word and that we will praise you like none other, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We give this service to you. It's yours. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Please stand and join me in the reading of our Women's Seasons Scripture, coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty. Let me say that again. Yeah. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, yes. and a garment of praise, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen, amen. We appreciate you. 
for being our sufficiency. Woo! For being everything that we need. We can rejoice in the fact that you're everything that we need. Woo! You are my strength. Strength like no
him right there. And now we've come to that part in our service where everyone can participate, where we can give back something that God has given to us this week. We ask you to give to Reed Temple. You can text Reed Temple all together to 833-715-3318. And why do we ask you to give? First of all, the tithe is our obligation to God. That's what God asks us to give. And second of all, we give thanks for God giving us the breath of life and the activity of our limbs. But more so, we want you to help undergird the mighty work that Reed Temple does. We're out in the community. We just finished our coronavirus clinic where we vaccinated over 20,000 people in connection with the Luminous Doctors Health Clinic. Amen? And in addition, we give out food cards to those who need it. So we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked. Now, it is Women's Season 2021. And we call it an assessment, but really what we want you to do is to go into your heart and give because it's women's week 
And so we ask you, if you're a woman, we're asking for 100. We ask you for that. We, some of you can do more, and please do. Some of you, that might be difficult. We ask you for whatever it is God lays on your heart to bless the Women's Week 2021. And men, you can help us too with this assessment. $50 we ask for you, and then for our youth and young adults, we ask for $25. But more than that, it's not just an assessment, y'all. It's our way of giving back to Reed Temple that gives out so much. And so we thank you. Let's bless the offering. Lord, we thank you for those who are digging deep right now to bless this women's season 2021. We have reached seasoned women. We've reached younger women. We've reached out to everybody. And we've come together as women of faith to support our beloved church. So we thank you for those who are helping us even as we pray. Bless it. And we will use it to your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Reed Temple. I have the honor of introducing Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie serves as the 117th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Her historic election in the year 2000 represents the first time in the over 200 year history of the AME Church a woman had obtained the level of Episcopal office. Additionally, she was the first woman to be the president of the Council of Bishops, chair of the General Conference Commission, and was the first woman host bishop for the 49th session of the General Conference of the AME Church in June 2012. Her husband, Dr. Stanley McKenzie, serves with her as Episcopal Supervisor. Currently, she is honored to serve as the presiding prelate of the 10th Episcopal District, where she provides leadership to all of the AME churches in the entire state of Texas. She exercises ministry and administrative responsibilities for over 200 churches. Bishop McKenzie was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve on the inaugural President Advisory Council of the White House Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnership, as well as received an invitation to preach at the annual White House Easter Prayer Breakfast. Bishop McKenzie has written five books. Bishop McKenzie is well known as an electrifying preacher, has been honored for her leadership, community service, and outstanding achievements by a number of diverse civic, educational, business, and governmental organizations and leaders. She was named in 2015 by Huffington Post as one of the 50 most powerful women religious leaders in the world. After the sermonic selection, hear ye her, Vash Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie.
Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Dr. Mark Whitlock and Reverend Whitlock for your distinguished invitation to come and worship with you and the people of Reed Temple. Congratulations, my sisters, on your, on your women's weekend. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you for this moment in time. Now, God, create a space. Hallelujah, where miracles will happen and prayers are answered and healing will take place and people are saved and lives are transformed. And we thank you in advance for all that you will do with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our text this morning comes from Psalm 73. And I'll read a few verses, like verses 1 through 3, and then I'll jump down to the end of the chapter to verses 15 through 17, and I trust that you will take time in your private devotion moment just to sit with this psalm and let it marinate with you for a while. Hear the word of the Lord. Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet almost stumbled. And then let's come down to verses 15 through 17. If I had said, I will speak this, behold, I would have been untrue to the generations of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood therein. And our, and our theme and thought of meditation today is, Almost arrival. Almost arrival. Beloved, all of us have had our almost moments. That particular tick of the clock that something that should have happened didn't and something that shouldn't have happened did. Yeah, almost moments like when I almost gave up and almost lost my temper and almost lost it, almost said the wrong thing, those almost moments. The time you almost took a stand, almost spoke up, almost made the call, almost hung up, almost said something at the wrong time to the wrong set of people, almost pushed the button to send an email that should have never been sent in the first place, almost, almost moments, almost in trouble, almost out of trouble, almost moments. When you were almost tied up by something you didn't want to be tied up in or tied to something or someone you didn't need to be tied up to, almost, almost wrote that book, almost passed the class, almost got an A, almost failed, almost floundered, almost flunked. Yeah, there are some stuff that almost went viral on TikTok or personal information that almost got into the wrong hands. Uh, stuff almost got out. Uh, some things almost got away. Almost, 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 almost made it. Almost got in. Almost alive. Almost promoted. You almost got the job. Almost in a, ra uh, in a relationship. Almost to the altar. Almost on your way to the best credit score you ever had in your whole entire life. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Turn to the neighbor in your square, you know, into, into the, and say, almost, yeah, you can do it. Oh, Lord, your best ideas almost fell into the hands of a competitor. All your dirt almost traveled on the gossip train. And if we're honest with ourselves and God this morning, no matter how stellar our character, pristine our virtue, how committed 
uh, our commitment to Christ and the church, the family and friends. There have been some times ah, that almost, because of almost, we weebled and wobbled, but we didn't fall down. Almost can be capricious when it wants to. Uh, certainly, almost is unreliable, impulsive on any day, malicious in a heartbeat, quixotic, forever leaving us to the edges of stuff, just leaving us there, or allowing us to languish on the thresholds. We neither here nor there, just languishing on thresholds, leaving us in its own twilight zone of sighs and groans and a whole lot of thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Almost as personal. It can also be political, and there seems to be unseen forces everywhere pulling strings behind the scenes. So just when we think we have breathing room at last and knees start to lift up off our necks, uh, we're offered a holiday to remember a day of freedom. And on the same day, state governments uh, uh, take away our our freedom to vote and act laws to suppress our vote, just making it hard for us to exercise the freedom to vote. At the same time, almost as personal, uh, we are well acquainted with our own set of almost. Yes, we are. It's political. It pushes our lives to the edge of the good and the bad and the ugly every day to remind us just like there are no days off in heaven, there are no days off in hell. There are no days off from racist and racism, no days off from sexist and sexism, no days off from micro and macro aggressions. Ah, Glory to God. But my sisters, this is our hallelujah shout moment. Yes, it is. Just like Audrey Lord uh, wrote, come celebrate with me that whatever tried to kill me today failed. Come on. Are you shouting yet? Celebrate with me that we are women with an inherent fierceness to protect and a yearning to love with a strength that doesn't come from what others give us, but from what we recognize and claim for ourselves comes from the word of God. Are you shouting yet? We are women. Come celebrate with me that we are women able to co-create with God, to birth nations and dreams and change lives. Uh, are you shouting yet? Come celebrate with me that we were created with wonder, filled uniqueness and style and purpose uh, as the fullness of creation. Are you shouting yet? Come celebrate with me. We are women with enlarged heart to embrace with love the world larger than our own. Are you shouting yet? Come on, celebrate with me. We are courageous women who continue to flesh out our dreams, women who are acquainted with the uncertainties of life. We have tasted the soil of valley floors and the rare air of lofty heights. Women with enough sense that if we fall, we know how to ask God to help us rise again. Put within us a faith and hope that cannot be quenched. Are you shouting yet? Come on and celebrate with me that God has uniquely fashioned us so, so that we can suit up for a fight when a fight is needed, adjust our armor and go to war, and at the same time tenderly rock the cradle and someone's world with or without makeup, a mani and a penny before 9 a.m. and caffeine. We have the power to organize the world and call it to attention. You shouting yet? Come on, celebrate with me. And in this Psalm, Psalm 73, the psalmist reminds us of the peril of almost that can sit in our, the background of our resume caused by unresolved frustrations where he found and where he found the resolution to the problem that was causing him so much pain. In our text, we find Asaph, an ancient minister of music, who organized the temple and choirs in the days of David and perhaps also in Solomon too, and Solomon, for Solomon as well. He was a valuable member of the music ministry, and he also prophesied according to the order of the king. And if anybody knew his way around God's and God's temple, it was Asaph. He was around God and God's temple for rehearsal. Uh, teaching the songs, uh, organizing the voices, the cymbals and the timbrels and the dancers and the string instruments and organs. And if anybody knew their way around the church, it was Asaph, yeah, around God and God's temple and God's people. So I'm not surprised, and I don't think you would be too, that he would begin this rendition 
by saying, or maybe he was singing with a firm and strong conviction and a strong voice. He sang, God is good. He said, God is good. All right now, ASAP. <laughs> yeah, God is good. And, and can you just imagine that somewhere, somewhere out there in the temple, somebody would respond to ASAP and say, all the time. And then ASAP would again, with a strong, firm conviction in his voice and his song and say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Asaph was close enough in his relationship with God to see how God demonstrated God's goodness towards Israel. That's what he said in the text. I, I, I can see God's goodness turn towards Israel and those who are pure in heart. So, so what Asaph is saying, I, I know this, I got this down pat. This is cool. I got it. God has showed up and, and showed out for me and for Israel. And, uh, and I have days like that, don't you? I, I have days like that. Uh, when out of my mouth flows rivers of accolades to God. I just want to say, God, you're so good. You're so good. You know, you know how that sounds like, God, you've been better to me. Come on, finish the sentence. Then I've been to myself. God, you work that thing. I, 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 I haven't, I, I have, haven't you? Uh, 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 God, you just blew my mind with that blessing. I, I, I've said that, ha haven't you? Oh, you so sweet. We've sung it so sweet, so sweet, I know. Uh, God, you, you're the master builder. You are the molder. You are the shaper. God is good. I've said it, haven't you? Haven't you? Haven't you? But then every now and then that almost, or that almost shows up. I almost let go. I almost, I felt just like I couldn't take it anymore. And so Asaph says, but my feet almost slipped. Mm. Asaph knew what he knew, but now frustration was setting in because he was looking envious at what was happening in somebody else's life, somebody else's life. Frustration was setting in, and the frustration called it his pain. It was confused. It was chaotic. Because if God is, is so good to Israel and to the pure in heart, how come God is also good to the wicked and to the boastful? Wait, wait, wait a minute now, my God, my God who is good is good to the get away with it all the time crowd too. Look at here, look at here. God, I, I'm confused, I'm frustrated. The bad folk are winning. The mischievous are up to no good. The scoundrels are getting rich. God is good, but, but God, this don't make no sense at all. Breonna Taylor, don't make no sense at all. Floyd Floyd, don't make no sense at all. It don't make sense. The wicked. What are the, God is good, but the wicked, they're not harassed or, or oppressed by other people. Go down and read through the text. They have a strong bank account. Violence covers them. I love the poetry of the song. Violence covers them like a, like a garment, like a pride is a piece of jewelry mm, that they wear. They have more than they could wish for or spend for in two lifetimes. Their, their strength is firm and ASAP who is around God and God's temple all the time is firmly frustrated. And his frustration keeps building and building and building until this frustration of, of the wicked getting away with everything. Yeah, they kill, they murder, they steal, and they and they still not in jail, still not in charge, still not charged. Frustration keeps building up until it smacks right up against his faith. Why do I have to keep my hands clean? Why do I, I have to have a pure heart before God when it looks like the wicked are getting all the perks? Woo! And Asaph said, I almost went over the edge, questioning the value of holiness over the wages of sin, which is death. <laughs> the Message Bible translate, translate that verse this way. It says, what's going on here? Is God out to lunch? I've wondered every now and then, God, what's going on here, haven't you? I, I, I do not understand how this happened. God, what's going on here? I'm confused. I'm, 
I'm getting tangled up between what I know about you for myself. God is good and marvelous and too wonderful for words. And what's going on, what I see, I'm baffled by, by what they're doing and the things don't make sense here, God. When, when condos crash and tornadoes in Chicago and, and a driver plows through a group of runners or a shooter takes out their bad day on innocent grocery store shoppers, God, this don't make sense. When the get away with it every time crowd gets away with it again. And then you stop and remember all the times, all the times God let you get away with whatever it was you were trying to get away with. Somebody say, amen. This is the moment when when we forget that God's ways are not like God's way. It, it's different as night as day. God's way is not like our way. His thoughts are not like our, our thoughts. God is infinite and we are finite. And God knows uh, from the beginning uh, to the end and knows the end from the beginning. While we only see just a short part of now, God knows the wise. While we struggle to learn the lessons and reach for the wisdom that is, that is there, and when it gets dark, this is when that almost strangles our trust in the Lord and our hopes need to be resuscitated. Here, beloved, is where, is where we get to know the power of the pause, the power of the pause. That's what I said, the power of the pause. ASAP, yeah, uh, choir director, organizer of the music, uh, the minister of music, ASAP, was ready to go public with his pain, his frustration, and his anxiety. He's in the text. He had his Facebook post already. He had already organized his 140 characters to place on, the, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Letters were assembled, ready to go out. He was going live on Instagram and put God on blast. But he paused, paused, paused. He paused. He paused. Pause is powerful. It's not a moment of nothing. But when you pause, it gives you time to think. Examine yourself. That's exactly what he did. To check himself out. Check where, check where his thoughts were leading him. Pause. Open the door for him to do his own investigation. And the moment the pause interrupts to create space for options to happen. The power of the pause gives you a chance to stop and think, give you a chance to check yourself out, check where your thoughts are leading you. Pause opens the door so you can investigate what is happening in the moment. Pause interrupts and creates the space for options to take place. And Asaph said, if I went public, what would that do to the young believers? What, what, what would that do to the next generation? For what I say, what he said, what I say impacts their lives. What I sing impacts their lives. What I preach impacts their lives. If I went public with these thoughts, it may undermine everything that we have done. He tried to understand, and the more he tried, the more he cried, and the more he tried, the more pain he was in. And so what did the brother do? What did ASAP do? And what does that mean to us on this Women's Day? Well, ASAP could have left the church. He could have resigned his position. He could have just sucked it up and went through the motions. He could sit soaking sour for the rest of his life. He could be bitter because he couldn't understand, couldn't resolve the issue between what he thought about God and what he saw with his own eyes. And we all know those who lost faith wrestling with what doesn't make sense. Haven't you wrestled with what doesn't make sense? What did Asaph do? He didn't resign. He didn't leave the church. Text says he went to church. He said, until I went into the sanctuary. Go down and read it, verses 15 through 17. Until I went into the sanctuary. He, he went uh -huh, to be renewed 
He went to be restored and revived. He said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Beloved, you can be around God all your life. You can be around God's temple all your life. You can be around God's people all your life. You can work for the Lord all your life, serve Christ and Christ's people. You can spend your whole life on the mission field, hauling water to desert places, preaching and praying and serving and sacrificing and loving and leading, going to church all your life. But never enter into the sanctuary of God until I went to church. Yeah, it wasn't until King Uzziah died that I say Isaiah saw the Lord. It wasn't until a Damascus road that Paul heard the voice of the Lord. It wasn't until Moses saw that burning bush until you get to the sanctuary, the space where God is. Why? Because there is a difference. Yes, God is everywhere. And everywhere is God's. And there's a difference between God is everywhere and God is here. Oh, glory to God. God is here. God is here. He went to the place where God is here. He went to the place where God is here. God is here in your living room. God is here at your dining room table. God is here in the sofa. God is here in the sanctuary, to the sanctuary, to the space where God is here. And something happened in the here. He gained a perspective on his problem that he didn't have before when he came to the place where God is here. Here. Uh, he gained an eternal viewpoint that he didn't have before. He got an understanding of what God was up to. They, were get, they weren't getting away as God was placing them in slippery places. He went to church and what happened? What happened? What happened by prayer and worship in the sanctuary? He understood that God was at the center of all and he gained a fresh appreciation of both God and eternity. What happened when he went to the place where God is here uh, by hearing the word? of God in the sanctuary, he understood that there was a truth that went beyond what he saw and an experience in everyday life uh, uh, by observing sacrifice uh, at the sanctuary. He understood that God took sin so seriously that it must be judged and atoned for even if, if by an innocent victim who stands in the place of the guilty by faith. Come on, Jesus Christ, uh, nailed to the cross for our sins. Uh, he said, I almost stumbled, I almost, almost, almost until he went to church, uh, whether in person, uh -huh, online, in the place where God is, our spiritual sentence, uh, our senses uh, are heightened in the place where God is, uh, and we can hear the voice of God clearly, clear instructions on how to be comfortable with uncomfortable, at ease, uh, in uncertainty, uh, in the midst of chaos and change, peace, uh, all comes when you're in the place where God is here in the middle of the pandemic. So when Satan slithers through the front door of your household into your life, uh, you are tempted to almost doubt and almost give up, almost do something stupid like diminishing God's grace, uh, God's mercy, or God's call on your life by using your gifts below the standard of heaven or at the direction of God. What happened to Asaph? He went from almost to arrival. That's where he went. Almost to arrival. He went to the place where there are new glories and new revelations and new perspectives and new ideas. He went to the place where there is new, new destiny. Yeah, a new destiny awaiting for him. And so today, my sister, is the day where you push through your almost, uh, your almost moment, huh? Just like I said at the beginning, the almost quit moment, uh, uh, almost moment, a time you almost took a stand and almost spoke, spoke up and almost made the call and almost hung up, almost went the wrong way, almost took the wrong turn, almost pushed that email out, almost, almost moments uh, when you were tied up and tangled up and toe up and flow up and almost wrote the book, almost passed the class, almost passed out, almost gave in, almost until you arrive that God is here. You arrive at the place of transformation, arrive at the place uh, huh, where God's hand can touch your life, at the place where you can see that God is up to something and you just don't see the hand of God moving in the background of your life. Arrive, arrive, arrive at a place, uh, hallelujah, where hope runs rampant and your faith is strong and your commitment is renewed. Arrive. 
Don't stay in almost, but arrive at the place of new perspectives, new ideas, new visions, a new perspective to see a new way. Come on, my sisters, on this, on this Women's Day. Don't get stuck on the edge of frustration, anxiety, and pain. But arrive at the place where God is, who will give you your new marching orders so you can be comfortable with the uncomfortable and certain even in the midst of uncertainty, where you can find peace ah, in the midst of chaos. Today, my sisters, go from almost and arrive at your new destiny. Praise God. Praise God. Peace of God over your lives, and we lose your joy. God, we lose your joy, unspeakable joy, unspeakable. And this time, when they lift their hands in worship, and this time, when they lift their hands in praise, it will be from a place of victory. It will be from a place of healing and not a place of pain. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. One by one, home by with them accordingly, God. You know what we stand in need of before we even ask God. So we bless you in advance for making a way. We bless you in advance for the miraculous. We bless you in advance. Hallelujah. And it is so. And so it is. And it is so. And so it is. And it is so. And so it is. In the name of Jesus. We trust you with the process. We may not understand it, God, but we trust you. We trust you in the process. 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 Move God. We feel you moving in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We just thank and praise God for such a wonderful service. And perhaps something was said, even a song was sung that touched your heart. And you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. Well, today is a good day to make up your mind that for God I live and for God I die. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save my soul. Lord, I, I give myself away so you can use me. I've tried everything else, and I've done everything else. But today, Lord, I give myself to you. So today... If you don't know Jesus, tomorrow's not promised. All we have is today. So right now, in your heart, tell the Lord, save me, forgive me, help me to live for you. And if you've done that, it's just like that. You're now saved. And your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God and the angels are rejoicing because of one soul they will rejoice. But for all those who have said yes to him, heaven is rejoicing. And we rejoice with you. We thank and praise God for you. 
and for making up your mind to say, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, if you need prayer, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, prayer changes things and ch prayer will change you. All you have to do is say, pray for me. Type it into the chat. Type it in. And somebody will contact you and pray with you. So we just thank and praise God. If you don't have a church home, Reed Temple is a wonderful place. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God that this is a family of all families. And you can gain some new brothers and sisters, and you'll even get a father in the ministry. And then right along the side with him, you'll have a new mother as our first lady and executive minister. So if you don't have a church home, come on, make up your mind. Don't die homeless. You need a place where you can call and the preacher will come and see about you. Come on, come on, come on. Make up your mind. Today is your day. Amen. And now that you've worshiped, now it's time to give back to God. And so we ask you to support Reed Temple. It's a good place. It's a good place where we, if you give to us, we give to the community. So all you need to do is type Reed Temple with no punctuation to 833-715-3318. That's 833-715-3318. And again, it's women's season. So lay aside that special offering above your tithe. Give your tithe first and then give $100 if you're a woman, $50 for men, and $25 for youth and young adults. Amen. We thank you for your offering. God bless it. Bless it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are so glad that the Lord showed up in a mighty way. But there are some individuals, and I can't call all the names that allowed this women's season to go forth for the plans that we made we gave them to the lord and he did what he wanted to do with them and we thank and praise god for this day for this week and we thank and praise god i failed to mention our morning services all the preachers and the lay persons who came out at 6 a.m lord have mercy every morning on rise up wake up and pray up the women came out and took over the 6 a.m service and i know that every word that went forth if you didn't get it i think you can still find it amen on youtube but there's some individuals that i must thank without a doubt we must thank god hallelujah and then we'll thank our pastor for allowing us to have this opportunity to support one another. And, 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 and the person who did our, our poem, we must say thank you. You will see that for the women from here on out. We're going to play it over and over and over again. But there's one individual that we cannot go without saying thank you. And that's the mother of the church. Mother Jefferson, we love you. We love you with all of our heart. We love you like no other. I'm so grateful that I can pick up the phone when I'm feeling bad or just want to have a conversation with somebody that's going to be real with me. I can call Mother Jefferson. And on today, Mother Jefferson, we want to present these flowers to you. We want to give these flowers to you, and, and they're not going to die. Hallelujah. They're going to live. And we thank and praise God for Sister Lori, who took her time and made this beautiful arrangement for you. We praise God. I thank and praise God for our chairpersons. I will mention their name. 
Sister Stephanie Campbell and Sister Jade Gilchrist, you're like no other. I'm telling you, them women worked and they worked us and they worked us some more. But by the grace of God, everything that your eyes have seen and your ears have heard, it's been them working in the background. And we thank and praise God for them. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the benediction and thank and praise God for all that he's done. And now, unto him who is a, unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of God. We bless you today. We bless you for tomorrow and we bless you forever. Now may the grace of God rest, rule and abide with each of us today and forevermore. In the name of Jesus and all said, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today, and we hope you will join us again. You can visit our Reed Temple YouTube channel to view other worship services. Stay in touch with us by friending us on Facebook and following us on Twitter and Instagram. We look forward to worshiping with you again. Courage takes courage. Strength takes strength. Power takes power. Wisdom takes all three. And what's greater vessel than she? She with whom God abides, walks alongside, lovingly provides for, manifests in. God is who she finds rest in, and God in her. How much trust must the Savior have in who has been entrusted to both feed and populate the land? And that does not indicate her worth, just that if Creator wanted fruit, Creator knew who would birth, and then commune with nations, movements, what is a community, the world without a woman. World would be sick, be hungry, be unlearned, be unloved, be misled. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, they said. But I'll do you one better. Heavy are the feet that tread this ground. Heavy are the hands that feed these crowds. Heavy are the tears that stream these faces. Heavy are the prayers that extend God's graces and the entire world is better for it. The elephant in the room, the voice in the wilderness, the perfect balance of power and tenderness. When everything seems flooded, women be the levee and we always make waves because women Walk heavy.
pastoral counseling with Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. is offering pastoral counseling for those who need spiritual, marital, family, and educational growth and support. To sign up or for more information, visit readtemple.org forward slash events or email ejohnsoncooper at readtemple.org.